Hello everyone, welcome back to Juno New Origins. I will be continuing my career, but first I would like to talk about some of the things brought up in the comments and acknowledge the help that I have gotten uh, as far as the UI is concerned. People have informed me, especially Pedro, who's been very patient, uh, considering I did not do the tutorials. I probably missed some of this information in the tutorials, but uh, I now know that there is a little button to adjust the camera in the flight screen. I also know about the grid size. Uh, multiple people, I think, told me about the grid size, so I know now that I can size things to smaller increments by changing that. Uh, so, yes, thank you for that. And I had specifically asked about duplicating parts, and now I know right-click and drag to duplicate parts. Um, so there's that. And uh, there are many other things that uh, people have mentioned. If I don't mention it here, that doesn't mean I didn't read it. And thank you for the information. There are tutorials. This, these videos that I'm doing are not meant to be a tutorial. This is experimentation. My normal thing is to experiment. I'll tell you a hypothesis. Basically, all rockets are hypothesis. I think this will work because, and I'll talk about the logic behind the design of it. We'll test it out, and if something doesn't work, I'll create a new hypothesis. So that is the idea. Also, I'm making the rockets as close to failing as possible, uh, generally speaking. So uh, one thing, I already knew about the center mass and center lift indicator, uh, but you can see uh, they're very close to overlapping. In fact, the center of lift here is a little bit higher than center mass, partly because of the extreme, I mean, presumably, I, I would think so, because of, of course, the fairing and then this extremely large cone here creating a lot of pressure. But um, yeah, you can get away with that if you have a gimbling engine. And so part of what I was doing previously with the flippiness, I wasn't that surprised by the flippiness. So maybe I overdid seeming surprised by it. But I wasn't surprised by the flippiness because I was trying to see how close I could get with those fins uh, to it flipping and resize them accordingly. So, but I, I'm generally sort of aware where the center of mass and center lift are and I cut it all pretty close. There are probably other, oh, uh, Pedro mentioned that you can just stage the payload, so I know that. So uh, yeah, if you mention it, I'll try to keep it in mind and if I fail to do that, then you can uh, shout at me for it. Uh, but uh, yeah. Oh, uh, and uh, just to note, I do have a joystick and a throttle. And so you will not be seeing me press tab to do the control scheme that most people will have to do for the game. Uh, because I'm using my joystick to control the rockets and generally will. Uh, one thing I'll, you'll see me do is turn off the automatic stabilization and turn it back on depending on whether I feel like it is doing good things for me or not. We will continue like that and we will take a look at what contracts we now have. So uh, launch one CubeSat and we've got a specific apoapsis and periapsis. I mean, it's very similar to what we've already done. So start grounded is no problem either. So uh, let me see, t take a look at the tech tree to see if we can unlock some different kinds of contracts by unlocking some technology. Um, this doesn't say anything about contracts. Some of them say something about new contracts, so... Um, new contracts. Piston legs, soft landing. Well, I think the parachute might be more important. Heat shield and parachute. But they don't say anything about new contracts with those. Mage engine. Gas generator. We only have pressure-fed engines right now. This is the only one that says new contracts. But I'm afraid those new contracts have something to do with landing. In which case, if it's Drew we're talking about as far as landing, we probably want the heat shield and parachute. Right. So... Um, let's... Let's unlock the heat shield first getting hot but we need about 25 extra tech points so let's see career I'll just I mean can we do the same cube set on oh this is doesn't even have a cube set yeah so can we do the same launch both of these let's see I mean, our current rocket should be able to do both. 
I hope this nose cone fairing isn't a bad idea. Oh, I guess one thing we can do is see what happens if we... Uh, change the size of this. That nozzle's huge. I should tuck that in, darn it. It is time to do some... Well, let's size this tank first. Well, it's very subtle, but you can sort of see that because I shortened this tank a bit, now the center of mass is just the tiniest bit below the center of... Uh, center of lift is just the tiniest bit below the center of mass. If we really... We don't really need the center of lift below the center of mass, but if we were really adamant about that. And we could probably do that, as you can see. We might be able to get away with a lighter engine. Starting thrust weight ratio of 1.12. Well, it might be best. Ending at 4 isn't too bad either. Okay, well... Hmm. Now the center of lift is doing a weird thing I don't understand. I don't see any parts around, but it's off to one side. <laughs> uh, well, there's another thing with uh, center of lift indicators. You're never entirely sure you should trust them. I'm I'm gonna go with the theory that. I, I can't trust that center of lift indicator. And we are just going to go ahead and launch this. I wonder if I, when I deploy the CubeSat, whether I still need to like explode the fairing or not. Maybe I can just plop it on to here instead. Right? But then it's really got to unbalance it. But the... The wheel in the control core should be able to handle that. Uh, let's just shoot it off to the side. I'm sure that won't have any horrible ramifications, right? <laughs> okay, well, here, here we need the grid size thing. Well, okay. So, this is going to be the experiment here. The experiment is whether we can put the CubeSat like that and fire it off like that and still do the second contract, which I think is in a slightly different orbit. So, we'll have to stabilize and do that. Alright, let's see if this works. Okay, throttle works. So, we have our apoapsis and periapsis. We'll have to go into that one first. Okay. I think we're good. Right. Launch. We are past the speed of sound. Okay, staging. Oh, 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 oh. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. This is not an unusual way to mount a CubeSat, but probably this is going too far. I mean, the rocket is very light, and the CubeSat is probably not that light. So. Okay, now it's overly ambitious. I'm just gonna end flight. We'll, uh, save flight. I'll just abandon that. So, uh, somebody suggested uh, undoing things. I don't, I'm not gonna undo things where something went wrong because of a choice I made, basically. So, in this case, we had our experiment. That was not good. So, back up it goes. Alright, let's try it again. Launch a new craft. Wrong craft. Hold on, let me... Yes. 
Track this craft. Yeah, yeah, uh, track this one. All right. And launch. We should be past maximum dynamic pressure. Ooh, just as I see that. We wiggle a bit, but it's all right. Okay, staging. I'm tempted to see what happens if I activate the cube set while it's in the nose cone. And yeah, I think somebody mentioned that you can put tanks into the nose cone. Since I'm using it as a payload fairing, I don't feel right about that. Actually, since I have made orbit, I wouldn't have minded uh, going back and taking a look at those tutorials I skipped, but I, I don't think there's that functionality here. You can't go back to tutorials that you skipped. It would, might be a good idea, though. Okay, well, I went a little bit too far there. Okay. And we'll just need that periapsis. Uh, let, let's get rid of the nose comb first. It'll work for now. We're actually spending some time in orbit this time. Okay, just a little boost here at night. Okay, we just need to detach the CubeSat. So, spacebar. Okay, we can end that. Well, I don't want to end flight. We did that part. But now I want to go retrograde. And this part, when we're just doing prograde or retrograde, I will use those little things. And I'll bring that periapsis down first. Okay, and we'll go to periapsis and then boost up the apoapsis, and that should be it. Still have plenty of battery, 94%. And ignition. Okay, holding it for five seconds. Oh, it's on one quarter. Okay, we did that. Let's just not leave space junk while we're here. Um, we've got the opportunity. Let's dispose of this. Um, you know what? We should do that at Apoapsis instead. Okay, ignition. And once again, I time warp too much. Okay, so that brings us to a negative periapsis. We're holding retrograde. Let's see what happens. We are in the atmosphere. Well, uh, we seem to have survived the heating, which is interesting. Do I even need heat shields? <laughs> Uh, it's very light though. It's a big container, right? There's not much mass to this. And it's got a fairly large surface area. But there's important information. Maybe I shouldn't have gone with the heat shield first. Maybe I should have gone with the parachute. They, yeah, testing this ahead of time would have informed a better decision on the tech tree. But hopefully we'll get some tech points to unlock things anyway. 64 meters per second. It's fairly low. Came to 60 here on impact. Ah, uh, it's still... Yeah, it's still all died. Okay. Well, we got our money. Okay. Quick deployment. Location. Um... Bit special, you have five minutes, periapsis above 80 kilometers, unlocks a new location. If 
Five minutes. Um, I think our launcher takes less than five minutes to get to orbit. Okay. Right, so... It seems important. It didn't say anything about CubeSat. I, I don't... What's, what's the catch? I'm wondering what the catch is. Is there a catch? Total burn time, 3.9 minutes. Okay. Um, it's not unlocked yet, so... Okay. Rapid deployment we go. Can't sneeze at two million bucks. We are past the speed of sound. Whoa, okay. Okay, go back. <laughs> go back, go back. Well, no apparent problems that I can see. I'm throttling down a bit just to make sure we make a nice orbit. Should not hurt us as far as the five minutes is concerned. And... Okay. We have completed the contract. So, we've got a new launch site then, in theory. Heliosynchronous orbit. Well... Game physics aren't that fancy, but it's a cool orbit no matter what. Huh. Hmm. Well, that's more interesting, that's for sure. And maybe we can pack it in with this light speed one. Possibly getting out to that uh, 1,000 kilometer apoapsis. It might not need 4,000 meters per second, but... We could probably bring it down afterwards anyway. Inclination 100 degrees though. That's interesting. We're gonna need a lot of extra delta V for this, but we've got money and it's about time we did something different than just orbit. Okay, let's try and pack both of these into the same rocket. So, I I'm gonna want three stages now. And, you know, we're rolling in money. It should be fine. They didn't say anything about a payload, either. 0.5 meters still, though. It's tiny. This rocket's tiny. Um, we don't have any other fuels or cycles or anything right now. But we could make it cheaper with a lower chamber pressure. So, the mod propellant is... The actual cost is 20k. Yeah. And if we change to Parallax, it's 46k. Well, that's huge right now. Well, but now it's 32k. We don't have a very good thrust to weight ratio. But then again, it's probably going to be mostly a space stage. And we're not under a 5 minute limit or anything like that. 3.8 is not too bad. As long as the first stage is nice and hefty. 35k is not bad. Maybe we should SpaceX this and put like nine of them at the bottom. I get the feeling that it's not the most economical thing though. Uh, maybe having multiple of the upper stage engine isn't a bad idea. Time to duplicate. Okay, well, we need even less nozzle length than we do right now. The nozzle air area ratio thing is perhaps pushing it a bit. Because we end up having a tiny, tiny, tiny nozzle. But starting thrust weight ratio of 0.1, it's probably not going to do very well. Not a real big fan of clustering this particular model because of the, the little round pressurization tanks, I suppose. Or whatever they are. 
I was thinking of having a third stage, but it's not... Having a second stage like this isn't great looking. But then again, it's not going to start off at zero altitude anyway. I suppose it's not that bad a price. Okay, so we will have a three stage rocket and we'll see what we can do with it. Well, let's say maybe we can use the second stage engine. Still not great at sea level either. We might have a little bit sticking out. <laughs> Six of them. And they're sort of clippy. It's a little bit expensive. Okay, 7.33 kilometers per second though. Well, that, that'll give us enough. They paid us plenty. And they're promising to play it, pay us more, so... How much are they giving us? I mean, 2 million there, 1.6 million there. Surely we can launch a 419k rocket plus pad costs. And I'll shorten the nozzle so we get better thrust weight ratio at a lower altitude. The width of this is just to fit the engines at the bottom. Okay. Well, right. Seven kilometers per second in vacuum, of course. And it's an experiment. Let's see how it goes. Uh, I that ollie pad is really expensive. I suppose there's going to be a reason for that. We'll just use the village pad. Or maybe, are we within the limits? Oh, that we're not within the height limit. We're a little bit too tall. Well, well, we shortened the nozzle on this. We don't need that much inner stage. Maybe we should make the top fatter. I mean, it'll hurt our delta V a little bit. Uh, we could make this slopey. Well, that's not looking wonderful. But that right there will get us within the limit and still give us 7 kilometers per second. So, okay. Right. So, 100 degree inclination. And so that means backwards. We're going north, but a little bit west. Bottle up. And ignition. We seem to have enough battery power for this sort of thing, judging from the previous satellite mission. So 90 degree inclination would be just like north or south. To get more than 90 degrees you have to go backwards, west a little bit. We still want to start out in a low orbit. We don't want to go directly to 1,000 kilometers. Heat damage, huh? Okay, well... <laughs> it lasted longer than I thought it would anyway. Yeah, we wanted to start out with a low periapsis for efficiency's sake. You get better bang for your buck if you're closer to the surface and also to get to four kilometers per second we'll want to be close Oop, deviated a little bit you want to be close to drew okay staging well we got 3.67 kilometers per second here we need to maintain some pitch to give it time okay it's happy with that. Just point back to prograde a bit. Okay, an apoapsis of 100 is fine. Our time to apo apoapsis is more than enough. We can flatten out here. K 
Okay, 4,000 meters per second, here we come. Completed tier 2 of Drew Orbits by exceeding 5. We got 50 tech points for that. And altitude record. Well, we'll be getting a few of those. We're going for 4,000, so we'll overshoot the 1,000 kilometer requirement. Okay, it's happy with that. So, we actually got to close to 2,000, but now I'll have this flip around, uh, retrograde. And bring it back down to 1,000. Okay, and then we'll coast up to that apoapsis and circularize. Okay, prograde. Plenty of battery power. That should be within tolerances. Ignition. Uh, that apoapsis is going too far. But this will be a good rocket to do a moon mission with. Well, for a small payload anyway. Okay, there we go. Not to do a bit of a real thing. But we've got it. Alright, so we got both contracts done. And can we can we deorbit this? Just on a space junk removal sort of thing. I don't know if 653 will be enough. Let's see. Um, retrograde. Okay. Well, that is on a crash course to the, to Antarctica, whatever you want to call it there. Well, I guess I don't need to follow it down. I'll trust that it gets eliminated this time. And in flight. Safe flight. Okay, well, we did some interesting things. And, well, we need to unlock some stuff in the tech tree if we want to get new stuff. So... New contracts here with system engineers. I'll take that. Mechanical engineers. I mean, that unlocks rounded noses and hemispheres and striped fuselages. I can't say that that's high on my requirement list. Uh, what we could have wanted was, let's just go with uh, gas generator engines, maybe. Yeah, let's get gas generator engines. Let's get parachutes. Fairings. Let's get proper fairings, so I don't have to keep using the stupid nose cone. Okay, so that is what we've got, and next time we'll see how we put that to use. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I will see you next time.